after completion of the first colligative property relative lowering of vapor pressure now i like to describe the second colligative property which is the elevation of boiling point of a solutions before going to the before going to describe the boiling point uh, elevation of boiling point uh, let me first explain what is meant by the boiling point of this liquid if a liquid is uh, taken in a container and heat is supplied to this uh, container the temperature will rise and with the rise of temperature the more of the liquid is vaporized and this evaporation occurs from the surface of this liquid and when the te temperature is increasing by the application of heat to this liquid vapor pressure is also increasing whenever the vapor pressure becomes equal to the super incumbent pressure or you can say the external pressure then this liquid starts boiling whenever the liquid starts boiling whole of liquid will be bubbled up and the temperature at which this uh, boiling occurs and this is called the boiling and this uh, temperature at which this uh, boiling occurs is called the boiling point of this liquid let me say this uh, tv uh, tv not is the boiling point of a pure solvent of a pure solvent at an external pressure And uh, this uh, TV, TV naught, is a function of this uh, pressure. If the P external pressure is being changed, the boiling point of this liquid or the pure solvent will also change. And the boiler, and this uh, variation of this external pressure with this uh, boiling point is described in a Clausius Clapeyron equation. So whenever when when P is equal to one atmosphere, when the external pressure is equal to one atmosphere, that means at the sea level, uh, the temperature this uh, T V naught is called the normal boiling point. Normal boiling point of the of the solvent of the liquid. liquid every every substance every liquid is having a fixed or characteristic boiling characteristic normal boiling point and uh, and this uh, liquid is having is, 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 this uh, normal boiling point of this liquid is a characteristic property and uh, whenever in this uh, pure uh, solvent some non volatile solute is added its the boiling point is increased and say tv is the boiling point boiling point of the solution solution containing non volatile solute and this are the external pressure external pressure P P have been kept and P generally have been taken one atmosphere and this set TV is a function of function of this pressure and also the x1 x1 is the mole fraction of this solvent in solution so it is very surprising it is a common common experience it is our common experience whenever 
some non volatile solute have been added to this uh, uh, liquid, its uh, boiling point is increased. And uh, TV is a function of pressure and XO. With the rising pressure, this uh, TV also increases. Uh, and X1, when X1 is, is uh, decreased, the boiling point of this solution is increased. Means there is an interrelation between this boiling point of this solution and the mole fraction of this, of this solvent. Uh, or we can say whenever this X2 the mole fraction of this solute is increased and TB is also increased. This uh, is found, it is found that this uh, TB is uh, greater than TB naught. Means a boiling point of this solvent is elevated whenever some non-volatile solute is added to it. And, uh, and uh, this and TV minus TV naught is called the delta TV. Delta TV and it is the elevation of boiling point. Solution. Means the boiling point of the solution is elevated. And this is the delta TV, the reason for the elevation of, or reason for the occurrence of this elevation of boiling point, I have, I have already discussed in, uh, in terms of this concept, chemical potential in my last lecture. Uh, now today, I like to start the origin of this elevation of boiling point by using this vapor pressure of this liquid. You know the reason or this cause, this vapor pressure of a liquid and it is the temperature. Vapor pressure is brought in against this temperature and the, with the rising temperature, vapor pressure is increased and the vapor pressure of this solution is lower than that of this pure solvent. So this if we draw this curve, then this curve is for the pure solvent. Pure solvent. This curve, nature of this curve is exponential and it has been described already in terms by the Clausius paper equation. This P equal to A into T to the power minus L to the power by RT. This LT bar is the molar latent heat of vaporization and T the temperature, A some constant, P the vapor pressure. So this uh, vapor pressure changes with the temperature or increases with the temperature exponentially. And for the case of solution, it is lower. This is the curve of vapor pressure one of temperature for this solution. At any temperature, the vapor pressure of the solution is lower than that of this pure solvent. So now, suppose this is one atmosphere. This is one atmosphere. So whenever the external pressure is one atmosphere, this temperature, Tb0, is the boiling point of this pure solvent. Since the vapor pressure at, the, at this temperature, vapor pressure becomes equal to the one atmosphere, and this and the pure solvent will will boil. But at this temperature, this solution will not boil. So vapor pressure of this solution is much less than one atmosphere. So in order to uh, boil this solution, the temperature has to be increased so that the vapor pressure again becomes equal to the equal to one atmosphere. So this one, this one is the TV and this is the boiling point of the solutions. So this uh, boiling point of the solution is increased, elevated and, and this one is called delta TV.
elevation of boiling point. Now, I uh, just like to uh, describe the experimental law, which is the uh, Rouse law. Rouse law of elevation of boiling point. Solution. Experimentally, from the experimental data, Raoult used uh, or formulated one experimental equation or the relation, and this uh, delta T V, delta T V, it is quite common with the increase of the concentration of this solution, elevation of boiling point will increase. And this mode of concentration to be taken uh, should be independent of the temperature. As there is a change in temperature while this solution is boiling, so the mode of uh, concentration to be taken which is independent of the temperature. So we can use this mole fraction of the solute or we can use the molality. Raoult used this molality and it is found to be safe. Proportional to N. N is the molality of the solution. N molar solution means N moles of the solute is dissolved per kg of the solvent. And whenever this one becomes equal, then it will be uh, Kb, some constant, proportionally constant, into N. This uh, Kb is called ebullioscopic constant ebullioscopic constant and this constant is totally a property of the solvent so ebullioscopic constant of the solvent ebullioscopic constant of the solvent whenever whenever uh, a it could be given another name when when the solution uh, solution molality when this molality of the solution equal to one then then delta T V delta T V equal to K B means if we consider the one molar solution then its elevation of boiling point is equal to the uh, ebullioscopic constant or Kb. So this uh, Kb is sometimes also called the molar elevation constant. Kb also called molar elevation constant of the solvent. But one molar solution is uh, highly concentrated and it is not the dilute uh, solution. So this uh, Kb is uh, defined as delta Kb elevation of boiling point for a molar solution and when n tends to 0. Means uh, for a solution uh, having very low value of a dilute solution and its uh, boiling elevation of boiling point is determined and this ratio can be taken equal to Kb. So this is also the molar elevation constant uh, for water. Uh, for water Kb equal to 0.52 Kelvin molar molar inverse. And whenever we consider the validity of this relation, this relation is only valid whenever the solution is a dilute, uh, so that it it can be a ideally, or you can say the condition condition for validity of this relation is that one ideally diluted solution. Solution must be ideally diluted so that it will behave uh, 
it will be an ideal or Rao's law. And the second one, solute is solute is a non-volatile. Non-volatile and non-electrolyte. If we take this electrolyte, then we shall have to introduce one very important term which is called the event of I factor. In the last of this chapter, we shall introduce this event of I factor. So these two are the conditions for which this relation is valid. Now we, I am coming to the application application of this uh, of this law. Now Actually, it is a qualitative property. Say, you can say, the whenever for different solutions, uh, for the solutions uh, having the different, uh, different uh, solutes, if the molality is same and the solvent is same, then delta TV will be also the same. It means that equimolar of different solutes dissolved in a given amount of this uh, solvent will elevate the boiling point to the same extent. It means that the elevation of boiling point depends on the number of particles uh, present, present in a given amount of this of a solvent. It does not depend uh, on the nature of this of this solute. Uh, say cane sugar, glucose or the uh, urea if a molality is the same aqua solutions, if you take this aqua solutions, the molality is the same, then delta TV will be the same, does not depend which is the what is the chemical nature of this solute dissolved in water. So we have an one application and say if W1 gram W1 gram solvent dissolves dissolves W2 gram non-volatile solute non-volatile and non-electrolyte solute of a molar mass L2 then this molarity equal to molarity of the solutions equal to this uh, W2 uh, divided by L2 this moles of this solute uh, dissolved per gram of this solvent and multiplied by 10 to the power 3000 gram of the solvent so this one this one is the number of moles of this uh, solute dissolved per thousand gram of this uh, of this uh, solvent, or we can write this molarity equal to W two into ten to the power three divided by W one into into L two. So one very important uh, application for this uh, for of this uh, colligative property is that. The molar mass of this solute could be determined. So delta T B equal to K B into uh, W2 into 10 to the power 3 divided by W1 into L2. Or this molar mass equal to K B K B into W2 into 10 to the power 3 divided by W1 into delta T B. So if a if in, if in a solution delta T B elevation of boiling point is determined uh, uh, of this known composition, W1 is the gram amount of the solvent in gram and this is the solute in gram uh, and Kb is depends on this uh, solvent 
if all these right hand sides are known then molecular molar mass of this solute could be determined and this molar mass is a very important property of this molecule then only only we can proceed to to have the molecular formula of this of this substance now the delta db how this delta db could be determined delta there are several problems for determining the delta db of this solution say uh, say water for water water in, if water is a taken the solvent then for water at kb equal to 0 0.5 to uh, kelvin molar inverse uh, it means that if we take this one molar solution say in one molar aqua solutions then its the boiling point will be elevated by 0 0.52 and this uh, elevation of boiling point is very small and one molar is also a uh, strong solution not a dilute one and so if we take if uh, if molarity is uh, taken 0 0.1 which is supposed supposed to be uh, behaving ideally then then delta tv delta tv equal to kb uh, into n and this one equal to 0.52 uh, Kelvin uh, molar inverse into 0 0.1 molar. So this will give you 0 0.052 Kelvin. This is small temperature difference is, is not possible to determine by means of ordinary thermometer. Ordinary, in case of ordinary thermometer, 1 degree is divided by 10 equal subdivision. So this one equal to 0 0.1 degree. Means 0 0.1 degree you can determine very accurately by means of ordinary thermometer. But it is much less than 0 0.1 degree. So to determine the elevation of boiling point, uh, Bateman one scientist, uh, say one German scientist, German chemist, devised one thermometer which is known as Beckman thermometer. This Beckman thermometer is a long capillary tube about 40 to 50 centimeter and having two mercury reservoirs. And this whole, whole uh, thermometer only uh, contains this uh, 6 degree and each degree is divided by 100 small divisions. So 1 degree is divided by 100 so it can determine 0 0.01 degree very accurately by means of a thermometer. This uh, thermometer uh, before using this has to be set up. It is called the setting of Beckman thermometer. Uh, here it is taken the solvent and solvent, whenever the solvent boils, whenever the solvent boils, uh, mercury thread should remain in, in the middle of this scale. Mercury in the two reservoirs are adjusted in such a way that the mercury thread should remain in the middle while this uh, solvent is a uh, boiling and, uh, and uh, now one thing I can also mention here whenever we are determining the melt boiling point of a liquid generally the bulk, bulk of this thermometer have been kept over this liquid within this vapor phase. So the chances of superheating is eliminated. Here if we, uh, we have to dip or immerse this valve in this solution and also the solvent. Uh, solution say um, if we keep this valve 
in the vapor phase which contains only the pure vapor solvent vapor of the solvent then the boil then the boiling point of the solutions will be equal to the boiling point of this pure solvent and does not give the boiling point of the solution so this is the uh, this is one problem imposing one problem the bulk has to be kept inside this solution either in solvent or in solutions and this is here so uh, whenever this bulk is kept within this liquid there is a chance of superheating and in order to avoid this superheating several precautions have been made say here uh, the uh, one circular double walled vessel containing pure boiling water is uh, surrounding this tube so that uh, this this tube this liquid uh, is what is raised to the temperature of this uh, boiling solvent and here is also one condenser here is also a condenser to prevent the loss of this of this liquid and uh, especially here the condenser has to be added to keep this uh, solvent amount of the solvent uh, fixed unchanged so this is the arrangement and whenever the first this the liquid uh, solvent is boiling and suppose temperature here up to this one mercury thread comes up to this level now the some weight amount w2 gram of this solute have been added to this w1 gram of this solvent and it is stirred and now makes a now it gives a solution and again this bulb is inserted within this solutions the temperature mercury thread will go up and here the mercury thread stands and this difference difference of this two mass gives you the delta tv so delta tv is the boiling elevation of boiling point of this of this solution kept in this tube and you you see the kelvin uh, you see beckman thermometer cannot record the boiling point of the solvent or boiling point of the solution it measures only the difference of boiling point and so this is called the this thermometer is called differential thermometer of course nowadays this Beckman uh, thermometer has been superseded by means of electronic thermometer which gives more accurate value uh, which will give more accurate value so that this molar mass of this solute will also give the accurate one now I Let us see one problem uh, which has been set in IIT Jan in 2010. Addition of 1.0 gram of a compound to 10 gram of water increases the boiling point by 0 0.3 degree centigrade. The amount of a compound needed to prepare a 500 milliliter of 0 0.1 molar is Option A 0.855 gram, B 17.1 gram, C 8.55 gram, and D 85.5 gram. Given the Kb of water equal to 0 0.513 Kelvin kg mole inverse. So the solution of this which option is correct one so the let us uh, calculate it is the it is this uh, problem consists of two parts first we shall have to determine or the calculate the molar mass of this uh, compound molar mass of this compound is equal to this uh, kb into uh, w2 into 10 to the power uh, 3 divided by w1 into delta kb putting the values here kb is equal to this 0.513 kelvin kg mole inverse into w2 here 
one point zero gram and uh, it is a ten to the power three ten to the power three unit is a gram uh, kg inverse means per kg it is a thousand grams and divided by this W one is ten gram into delta to be is zero point three zero point zero point three degree centigrade or you can if it's equal to this a Kelvin. The difference in temperature in Kelvin and degree centigrade will be the same. So Kelvin uh, Kelvin cancels kg kg inverse cancels and uh, gram gram inverse gram gram cancel and so this one equal to g when by multiplied by thousand it is five hundred thirty and divided by divided by three this is the gram mole inverse and this is equal to uh, one hundred seventy one gram mole inverse so this is m two is equal to one seven one gram mole inverse. One part is being solved. Then second part. For the second part, it is a zero point one molar mole. Zero point one molar solution means a zero point one mole is dissolved for. Uh, Thousand uh, cc of this solution, or thousand ml of this solution, and this uh, for five hundred ml of the solutions, it requires uh, the number of of mole mole of the compound compound will be equal to. 0.1 divided by 2 equal to 0 0.05 mole. 0 0.05 mole. Since it is 500 ml. For, for 1000 uh, ml, it requires 0 0.1 mole. And for 500 milliliter, it, 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 will, it will require 0 0.1 divided by 2 or 0 0.05 mole. So, and W2, amount of this is solute required is the number of moles of this solute in the, into the molar mass. So number of moles of this solute is 0 0.05 and the molar mass is 0 0.05 mole into this M2 is 171 gram mole inverse. So mole and mole inverse cancel. So when it is multiplied, it will give you uh, 5, 5 and 8. Now, so this one is the correct option for the for this uh, problem set in IIT exam 2010. This is all about the descriptions in the next class. I shall try to uh, derive this uh, Raoult's law thermodynamically using the concept of this chemical potential and also I explained what would happen if this uh, solute is uh, taken volatile and also I like I like to give you one problem for calculations. Thank you all for watching this video.